Good morning students, good morning teachers, this is me Kenzer Jiggs and welcome back to my channel. So in today's session, we will be learning about solving equations transformable to quadratic equations. Keep watching. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is me again, Sir Jiggs. So in today's session, we will be learning on how to solve equations transformable to quadratic equations. But before we start, I just want to say thank you for those who actually subscribed to my channel. And for those who did not, you can actually press or click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell for more updates. So going back for our topic for today, we will be learning on how to solve equations transformable to quadratic equations. First, we need to review the standard form of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. I want this to be highlighted because on the latter part of our tutorial today, you will be exposed to equations that are not written in standard form and rational algebraic expressions that can be transformed in quadratic equation. So that's the reason why if you are able to write this in standard form, it would be easier for you to solve for the roots of the quadratic equation by using any method that is actually applicable to the said equation. So on the first part, we'll be solving quadratic equations that are not written in standard form. First example, x quantity x minus 4 is equal to 60. So the first thing that we need to do here is to distribute x to the terms inside your parenthesis. So that would be x times x minus x times 4 is equal to 60. So the product of x multiplied by itself, that would be x squared, minus 4x is equal to 60. Then we need to move 60 to the left side of the equation. And that would give us x squared minus 4x minus 60 is equal to 0. So from this equation to this equation in standard form. So at this point, you can actually use a certain method applicable to find or solve for the roots of this equation. I actually use factoring. So I'm thinking of two factors of negative 60 that would give us a sum of negative 4. And they were negative 10 and positive 6. Because negative 10 times 6, that's negative 60. Negative 10 plus 6, that's negative 4. Then do the zero product rule. Equate these factors to zero. So that would be x minus 10 is equal to zero. So therefore, the first root is positive 10. Our second root, that would be x plus 6 is equal to zero. So therefore, our x is equal to negative 6. Let's do the checking. For x is equal to 10. First, the first thing that you need to do is to write the original equation. x quantity x minus 4 is equal to 60. So that would be 10 quantity 10 minus 4 is equal to 60. So the difference of 10 and 4, that's positive 6 times 10, that's 60. So 60 is equal to 60. So this is a solution. Next, for x equal to negative 6, so write the original equation. x quantity x minus 4 is equal to 60. So therefore, negative 6, quantity negative 6 minus 4 is equal to 60. So the difference of negative 6 and 4, that's negative 10, times negative 6, that's positive 60. So 60 is equal to 60, so therefore, this is another solution. So both solutions are true. Second example, quantity x plus 8 squared minus 9x is equal to 52. So the first thing that we need to do is to expand quantity x plus 8 squared. So it's like quantity x plus 8 multiplied by itself minus 9x is equal to 52. So considering that we are multiplying two binomials here, we can apply the FOIL method. So that would be x times x plus x times 8 plus 8 times x plus 8 times 8 minus 9x is equal to 52. So we need to get the product. So x times x, that's x squared. x times 8, that's 8x. x times 8, that's 8x. Product of 8 and 8, that's positive 64. Then copy negative 9x is equal to 52. So if you have noticed, I put a color for 8x. 
8x and negative 9x because we need to combine like terms. So that would give us x squared plus 7x plus 64 is equal to 52. So the next step that we need to do here is to move 52 to the left side of the equation. So there would be x squared plus 7x plus 64 minus 52 is equal to 0. So the difference of 64 and 52, that's positive 12. So our final equation in standard form, that would be x squared plus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. So I use factoring to solve for the roots of this equation and of course to factor it out. So the factors of 12 that is a sum of positive 7, that would be 4 and 3. So, zero product rule, equate these factors to 0. So, x plus 4 is equal to 0. So, our first root is negative 4. And our second root, x plus 3 is equal to 0. So, x is equal to negative 3. So, after getting the roots, let's do the checking. So, for x is equal to negative 4, the first thing that we need to do is to write the original equation. Quantity x plus 8 squared minus 9x equal to 52. Then substitute the value for x. So quantity negative 4 plus 8 squared minus 9 times negative 4 is equal to 52. So the, the sum of negative 4 and 8, that's positive 4. Then squared, that's positive 16. Negative 9 times negative 4, that's positive 36. Then if we will add that one to the product of 4 and 4 or 16, that's 52. So therefore, this is a solution. Next, for x equal to negative 3, write the original equation. Quantity x plus 8 squared minus 9x is equal to 52. Then substitute the value for x. So there would be quantity negative 3 plus 8 squared minus 9 times negative 3 is equal to 52. So the sum of negative 3 and 8, that's a positive 5 squared, plus 27 is equal to 52. So 5 squared, that's 25, plus 27 is equal to 52. So the sum of 25 and 27, that's 52. So 52 is equal to 52, another solution. So therefore, both solutions are true. So any questions, clarifications before we proceed? All right. So our second part is solving rational algebraic equations transformable into quadratic equations. So our third and final example, that would be 3 over x plus x plus 2 all over 5 is equal to 2. The first thing that we need to do here is to find the least common multiple of our two denominators, and that is 5x. So we need to multiply 5x to both sides of the equation. So on the left side of the equation, we need to distribute it on the terms inside your parentheses. So 5x times 3 over x and 5x times quantity x plus 2 all over 5. So 5x times 3 over x, that would be 5 times 3. Why? Because 5x divided by x, so x will be cancelled, so we have 5 multiplied by 3. Next, 5x divided by 5, that's x multiplied by quantity x plus 2 is equal to the product of 5x and 2. So the product of 5 and 3, that's 15. x will be distributed to the terms inside this parenthesis. So x times x, that's x squared. x times 2, that's 2x. Then the product of 5x and 2, that's 10x. So we need to move 10x to the left side of the equation. So that would be 15 plus x squared plus 2x minus 10x is equal to 0. Combine like terms. So our final equation, x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. So this is already in standard form. So we can now um, use any method to solve for its roots. So I actually use um, factoring. So same drill. So factors of 15, that would give us a sum of negative 8. And that would be negative 5 and negative 3. Negative 5 times negative 3, positive 15. Negative 5 plus negative 3, negative 8. And then proceed to the zero product rule. x minus 5 is equal to 0. So therefore, our first root is positive 5. 
Our second root that would be x minus 3 is equal to 0, so x is equal to positive 3. So let's do the checking. So for x equal to 5, so the first thing that we need to do is to write the original equation. So that would be 3 over x plus x plus 2 all over 5 is equal to 2. Substitute the value for x by 5, that would be 3 fifth plus 5 plus 2 all over 5 is equal to 2. So copy 3 fifth, so the sum of 5 and 2, that's 7, then copy 5 is equal to 2. So since both fractions are similar, so we just need to add the numerators. 3 plus 7, that's positive 10, then copy the denominator, which is 5. So 10 divided by 5, that's 2. So therefore, 2 is equal to 2, so this is a solution. Next, for x equal to 3, so again, same drill, you need to write the original equation. 3 over x plus x plus 2 all over 5 is equal to 2. Substitute the value of x with negative uh, with positive 3. So that's 3 over 3 plus 3 plus 2 all over 5 is equal to 2. So 3 over 3 copy. So the sum of 3 and 2, that's positive 5 all over 5. So 3 over 3 simplified, that's positive 1. 5 over 5, that's positive 1 as well. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to 2. So another solution. So therefore, both solutions are so if you have questions or clarifications, you can actually drop a comment below and I'm more than happy to answer all of those. So hopefully you learned something for today. So this is me again, Sir Jigs. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell for more tutorials. Have a great day.